Okay, I'm doing a recovery. This is one of those scenarios you have to recover slow in. In this kind of system, you have an orifice tube right here. You have a whole line filled with liquid with oil mixed with the oil. There's a lot of oil in with this refrigerant. You have like, say, let's give a round approximate number, 4% oil mixed in with your liquid refrigerant. And this is a big, this is bigger than a 3 8 tube. This is almost a half inch tube filled with liquid refrigerant. But you have an orifice here, but I'm recovering from the low side and the low side is right from the orifice. This line is dropping down low as they pull out the refrigerant as a vapor backwards up through the evaporator. But at the same time, since there's an orifice right here, it'll pull this liquid refrigerant, I mean, you'll pull liquid refrigerant and you'll pull oil out of the system on this type of orifice tube system where the high side and the low side are right here and orifice is right there. And if I open this, if I don't bleed it down more, let's see. Let's see if we can see it in there. Here, I'll open it up some more so you can see oil moving. I'll do it for a little bit. There you go, you see that? That's where you start pulling oil. That's why I have it like metered way down. So there's no movement. You see the sight glass in there? There's no movement. Now, if I opened it more, I could pull it out so fast that I can suck a lot of oil. Not all the oil, but I'll suck. I don't want to suck oil out of the system. So I'll recover it slower on this type of system because I know I can backlog oil and pull out oil out of the system. That's important. Different systems are different. Like the other one, you have some of those General Motors or Chryslers in the Generals where they have a low side service port right on top of the compressor, right on this fitting. There's a low side service port here and then there's a high side service port here. Some of them stick up, some of them stick forward like this. If you hook up your recovery machine and you yank out oil uh, refrigerant real fast, it'll literally, all the oil that's in the system, like the two or three ounces of oil that's in the, the bottom of the compressor. Sorry, my, I'm tired. It's 80 some degrees and I'm end of the day and exhausted. The oil will start boiling and literally come right up the tube, right in, and you'll pull out the oil out of the compressor when you do your recovery. You fill it up, it'll work, and it'll work really good. A couple months later, the compressor burns out. All right, so that's it. And the story on this one, he went somewhere in an emergency on somewhere, and they replaced this hose. Said it's not cooling right. I did a refrigerant ID and it's 100% pure and there was no air in it. I thought maybe I was gonna find air in it, but there was no air, that's good. Uh, so now I'm just checking the weight to make sure the weight is correct. And so I'm pulling out the refrigerant and on this one, it is a Suburban Front Utility and uh, pickup with front AC oil, utility front AC only. 776 grams so what, what one is this? this is a big diesel thing 6.6 6 liters 2500 diesel duramax it's just a cab crew cab crew cab crew what the frick is a cab crew i think took it with front ac only utility with front ac only i think it falls under this one it's not a suburban and it's not a utility with front and rear. It falls under this category right here. So this one should have 726 grams of refrigerant in it. So I will pull it out and we're approaching 500 grams right now in the recovery. I know I still have liquid, so we have for say there's 560 grams right now that I recovered out because there's some liquid in here that's not being weighed yet. And I'm down to 24 PSI, so let's open, I could open this up more because there should be no liquid now. So now I'm going to look down in the side glass and I'm going to see if I could open and recover faster. And it looks like there's no problem. Oh, I see something. So I, I, I yank it back down and just do a little bit. I'm in no hurry. Because you don't want to pull oil out of the system, so I, I put it all the way back, and I'll just wait. I have patience. This is a very hot system. It's hot outside. The engine was running. All the components are hot. The only thing that will give me a problem that won't be hot is that as the refrigerant pulls down and the pressure lowers, that accumulator is insulated. I can't put heat gun on it. The engine won't heat it up. 
that accumulator will take a little extra time to get the refrigerant out of that insulated accumulator right here that that'll cause me problems and I'm gonna have to get my sight glass and rig it up to a hose to show you guys oil movement because I don't think I've done that yet it's something my father did to me on vehicles was he had a clear sight glass that was inside line and he would have me hook it up to different vehicles and turn recovery and recharge and check the quality refrigerant look for metal particles all that kind of stuff and I think I have to bring that to my videos I just haven't done it and I think it's about time to do that uh, show you the difference on refrigerant uh, coming down the recovery line or coming up uh, or down the low side so that we'll do that in the future it just takes more time and time is something I don't have a lot of that's for the guys who uh, teach in schools and uh, have society of whatever and they do that kind of stuff this is something I do for my kid I teach my personal kid this my father taught me that kind of stuff so you see I'm looking in the sight glass I'm gonna open up uh, the flow a little more and I'm looking in the sight glass for any movement no movement all right open her up all the way there's nothing coming down. Oh, there we go, a little bit of movement. And I think that movement is more of the bubbling of the oil, lowering pressure, and literally, I'm gonna choke it down a little bit more. See, that was more of a raising and movement. So that was literally oil expanding, going past the glass really slow. And actually, I went from four to 10 PSI because I choked it off so much. Let me close it off all the way. Let's watch this go up. See that go up? That's the refrigerant boiling out of the oil that is mostly trapped in the bottom, whoops, in the bottom of that accumulator right there. And we're going up and I cycled off because I hit too low of a pressure. This automatically turns off. So let's do that again. Let's open it up because I have it closed right now. I wish uh, they would put a bigger sight glass on here. I need enough pressure to keep that on because if I don't have enough flow, it chokes off and that shuts off by itself. It has a pressure switch on it. So I need to, uh, so you can watch this. If it holds steady and it doesn't rise or it goes down, that means I'm pulling out refrigerant and there's nothing going by the side glass. No movement. So I'm good at this rate. At this rate, it's safe to know that I'm not pulling out oil. I've never stretched this as much, but I'm definitely going to have to uh, hook up my clear uh, my clear bottle on my hoses. Uh, I got to clean it up because it's kind of dry. I used it years ago, but I'll uh, get some cleaners, clean it up, shine it, polish it up, and bring it out of uh, dust collection, hibernating somewhere up in the garage, so you guys can see. Okay, I'm going to now crank down the high side because the high side should be low there's no liquid over there on the high side now because it's on an orifice tube right here between these two points so now i'll uh, and you see they're almost equal 4.3 3.9 now i'm going to open up this one and watch the pressure i opened it up a little purge there a little change Nothing, in, nothing happening in the side glass. So now I'm fighting getting the refrigerant out of the accumulator. This is all I'm waiting for. That's gonna be the longest process it is because you touch this line, this line is cold because it's attached to the metal to the accumulator and this is insulation. Even though everything out here is really hot from the engine and how hot it is today, this is chilling down the ice. If I could, if you could see, can I see? Yeah. There should be condensation on there. Oh no, it's ice. So this thing is a piece of ice right there right now. Now it's just ice. It's below 32 degrees. And what you're looking at right here, that shininess is not shiny metal. That's actually ice on there. It actually has frost forming on it. That's how cold this is. It's below freezing inside this unit. 
that causes problems. These are mother suckers to uh, pull refrigerant out of. Okay, so I'm basically wide open now. Yeah, I'm wide open. Let's look way down there. There's so little mass of refrigerant moving now, even with wide open, there's no movement of oil pulling by. Now, this is something when my dad would have me do things and learn, he would literally have clear, uh, clear sections in the hoses, containers, and show me flow of refrigerants. And he also had moisture indicators put in line. Where you would literally have a line, a single line with a moisture indicator and a sight glass. You'd go between the high and the low side. You'd have it under a vacuum. You'd see the moisture indicator would be nice and green. Green means good, yellow means piss. It's bad. And you'd put it between the high and the low and you would fill it up with a column of liquid water, let a little refrigerant, and you would meter it. And so it'd go from the high to the low like a metering device. And you would watch the green moisture indicator turn yellow on the contaminated cars. I really wish they put moisture indicator uh, sight glass, see all sight glasses on automobiles. So when the customer would get a service and if he ever seen that sight glass after a service turn from green to yellow, he could go back to the shop and say, give me back my money. I'm going somewhere else who knows what the hell they're doing and uh, fire that shop. Uh, you wouldn't believe how much wet gas gets put back into cars. All right, we're pulling down. All right, I'm gonna kill it right here and we will see what the total is when we're all full. Oh, wait a minute. Why do we have 910 grams? This is a pickup with front only. Utility, front only, 726 grams. 920 grams and I only have vapor there's still a lot more refrigerant here and there's still a lot more refrigerant boiling out of that uh, accumulator they overcharge this I bet you I'm gonna pull out I'm gonna pull out either 1.23 kilograms 1200 or 1400 kilograms so this truck was overcharged at the shop all right that's an easy diagnosis and that explains why when he went somewhere hot it would stop working because it would go over 440 psi and here's the high pressure cutoff switch and it would cut off his clutch and he didn't have ac typical shot this is what i find every day excessive moisture excessive air excessive refrigerant too little refrigerant too much oil too little oil i always find everything it's always caused by one of three things cause this it's always the owner's responsibility. Whoever owns the company or the technician, he is the number one responsibility of why stuff like this happens. Then it's either because somebody is cheap, someone's lazy, or somebody's ignorant. RTFM. That's all I got to say. All right, guys. I'll see you.